am looking forward to today's guest, chatting with today's guest, Debbie Payne. I This is the first time we've actually connected in virtual in person. We've connected <laughs> through social media and we have kind of got to know each other there and we're in very similar spaces and we just kind of had that um, same vibe about it. And I really wanted to find out about Debbie and how she does life. So welcome very much to the Happiness Hive podcast. How are you? Oh, I'm great. Thank you so much, Catherine, for having me. It's my pleasure being here with you. Yes. And we've had just a little pre-chat and it was just um, so much to, to unpack. So I'm going to, what I like to do is to start by just finding out from our guests what stage of life they're at, what's kind of going on for them in life at the moment. Um, so maybe just even start, Debbie, where do you live? Where are you living? Okay, so I uh, am in Sarnia, Ontario, which is a small city, a uh, population of about 75,000. Uh, we're a border city, so we have the Blue Water Bridge. So from Sarnia, if you take the bridge over, you're in Michigan, Port Huron, Detroit is an hour away from here, just to give you an idea. Yeah, so you're in Canada. In and Canada, just that's on the correct. border. We're just right. Yeah, we're just on the so we're border town. And in years gone by, it used to be a great opportunity to go shopping and all that. But uh, our dollar is taking a big hit right now. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And we were just talking about Aussies and Canadians. Like, we're really good buddies. Um, but our dollars, yeah. Not oh, bad. like, well, I'm going to Vegas this, uh, leaving this weekend mm. for, you know, five days with some, you know, friends and that. Yes, it's a, it's a girl getaway. Oh my gosh. And, I've been to Vegas. I love. Oh, yeah, I, love. I can't wait. I've, I've, I've only been once. I was there 20 years ago. So yeah. it's going to be, I'm going to see a lot of changes there for sure. Yes. But yeah. I'm excited to go. Yeah. Uh, but back to the question. Yes. Yeah. I think that, um, yeah, see, this is what happens when you get older, too, is that you're talking and then you completely forget what we're what, what <laughs> no, was just <laughs> that uh, so, so just asking uh, you what I, stage I was of there life and then I just at. went right out. So yeah. sorry. What stage of life you're at? I uh, okay. where you live. So, yeah. yeah, so I'm I, right now, I, born and raised from Sarnia, uh, moved away when my parents split up briefly uh, for, uh, well, I say briefly, probably for uh, 10 to 12 years, came back to Sarnia at 30. Yeah. and bought my first house and uh yeah I, you know got into my real estate business um prior to that in Hamilton Ontario which is closer to Toronto and the stage of life that I'm at right now well I would say uh honestly Catherine at 61 I feel that I'm really coming into a, a whole different yeah. era journey uh discovery period so to speak and 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 I'm really excited about it and um nervous and scared at the same time but it 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 really makes me appreciate and realize that you know it doesn't matter how old we are uh as far as you know looking for that what next chapter in our life uh discovering what talents gifts that we possess because as a mother you know uh, for years you're busy raising children or a child and and you're working or building a career and let's face it uh, most women while they're doing all that don't have a lot of free time mm -hmm. to really tap into um you know some of their own gifts because you know you really are you're you're, you're being on more uh, mm -hmm. especially when your children are younger etc so I don't know. I just feel like I'm footloose and fancy free and um, looking to dive in uh, all or nothing. I'm an all or nothing kind of girl. Oh, Debbie, I love that. And I got goosebumps when you said that you're coming into this new phase of life and it doesn't matter what age you're at. It's not necessarily an age thing. It's a uh, you're, you're coming into a newness. There's some new beginnings and that can happen in your twenties, can happen in your teens. It can happen in sure. your thirties and forties. Um, but it sounds exciting. It sounds, I, I want to dip into what that is kind of looking like for you, but it's kind of come about from not necessarily like you've had some adversity as well, haven't you? You've had some challenges that, um, 
But before we get into that as well, what was it like growing up for you? You said your parents were separated. Um, what was growing up like? Was What was home like? Well, to be honest with you, uh, and we'll talk about the book yeah. a little bit later, but I, me and my siblings, there were four of us. Yeah. And, um, you know, our parents, as you know, uh, we're from a whole different generation, mm-hmm. a whole different way of thinking, a whole different way of raising children, et cetera. And unfortunately, uh, for both of my parents in different ways, they had passed down generational, you know, trauma. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, that really did trickle. It can't help but affect your yeah. children. Um, my mother, unfortunately, uh, you know, was diagnosed with severe um, depression. And back in that, back in those days, they didn't really have a lot of understanding. No. And I remember my mother having to go to the hospital for days to get shock treatment. Oh, and I remember her coming back home and just not being there for a few yeah. days. Like just being totally removed, almost numb, maybe if, if, if that's. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you know. no, I, yes, I could. Yeah, uh, and my father yeah. was a, was, uh, you know, it uh, wasn't as severe. He wasn't, I don't, he didn't have depression. He was a workaholic and he had, you know, dysfunctions that were passed down, especially being a man, uh, that he was not really emotionally available. Mm. You know, because men yeah. back then especially yeah. were not emotionally yeah. available. Yeah. Um, not to, especially women, I think. Women, were, you know, women were thought of a lot differently as well uh, in, in the past generation. And that really played into my parents' conflict as well because my mother, as much as she had her own, um, you know, struggles with her depression and, and, and they really didn't know how to treat it properly yeah. back then, no, they no. they. Don't God, imagine well. that, like far out. That's oh, yeah, she slept, but like she, I just remember she was in the bedroom a lot of the time, mm. um, because they they just heavily medicated you, right? Yeah. You just check, yeah. you know. Yeah. But anyways, uh, so yes, my parents split up. We were, I was young, I was nine. My sister, younger sister, was uh, seven, and my brother was thirteen at the time. And my older sister stayed in Sarnia. Um, luckily, she had friends that took her in. Uh, the, the the father took Gail in. Yeah. Uh, at, she was only fifteen. Wow. So my mother uh, took the three of us to Chatham, Ontario, which is another even smaller uh, city than Sarnia. And things, yeah, unfortunately, things got progressively worse because um, as a child, you're not, you know, I didn't recognize we were on welfare. I, I knew we didn't have a lot. I knew we didn't have a lot of money, uh, but I didn't know how bad it was, uh, obviously, until now, you know, as a full grown woman looking back. But um, you know, there was, it wasn't all bad. I mean, I remember, you know, going out and playing, you know, the days where you're, you know, see it come in when it's dark, you know, when you felt safer at parents. Yes, it's a very different time, you know, isn't it? I remember. Totally yeah. different time, yeah. you know. Yeah. So yeah, it wasn't all bad by any means. It, it just, it taught me at a very, very young age, Catherine, I think really, uh, I, I think I started developing emotional, yeah. my EQ skills. Yeah, your emotional uh, intelligence. I will talk about that. But yeah. I can really navigate, like as a child, when you're when you're in that situation where both parents on different mm. uh, degrees, um, you really have to learn quickly uh, facial expressions and, um, you know, just how to stay in the neutral zone. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I was a middle child. Uh, yeah. So right in the middle, my yeah. older sister, older brother, and then there was me and my younger mm-hmm. sister. So interesting childhood for sure. Interesting life for sure. But uh, I think it all makes us who we are. I think no matter what we go through, um, good, bad, and, 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 and anything else that comes in between, uh, just, you know, if we can look at it as a learning experience and grow from it, I think that's really what, helps us become better human beings and embrace life on a different level. So, um, yeah, I probably, and I think that's where, and I think that's where you and I connected as well, because we do do similar sort of kind of stuff in our, in our business, but we've got that same outlook of life about, you know, we're not saying things, you know, tough things don't happen, 
but it's about how do we view those and how can we move forward from them? And what a big thing for me is about what can I learn? What is this situation trying to teach me? And when I'm repeating the same things, it's like, oh my God, Catherine, just get the lesson and move on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you're right. Life will keep throwing it, it at you. Stuff. Yeah. Okay. Until you learn it. Yeah. And, and let's be honest. I'm sure you can agree with this. There are times that lessons need to be learned, but we're not ready to learn them yet. Oh, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> and they just <laughs> keep us going. Yeah, no, <laughs> let's be honest. Oh, yes. And I've been yeah. there several times. Yeah. So yeah. that's why I can honestly tell you that, um, you know, I, and I think what happens when we go through that, Catherine, is it teaches us a lot about having more empathy. Yes. Uh, for, for people, yeah. um, you know, we're all so different uh, and yet we're also connected. You know, we're all so different in so many ways, but yet we're so similar in, in ways that matter, yeah. in my opinion. You yeah. know, yeah. as far as, you know, we all we all crave love. We all want connection. Um, you know, we all want to be happy. We want a joyful life. We want to be loved. Like, you know, and I think before I go on too much about it all, I'm really feeling it, and I'm sure you are, and, and yeah. most of us are, that we are in a very different world right now. Oh, for sure. And, Absolutely. you know, yeah. uh, for me, uh, I guess I'm just trying to, you know, instead of panicking about it all or or running for the hills, so to speak, um, I think as an individual, we, we all have that responsibility of, okay, so what can I do? to make a difference, right? Yeah. What, what, you know what I mean? Cause I believe we all can make a difference in our own way. Uh, do you know, I, I am very much about that as well. And sort of part of my um, mission is to help make the world a better place, yeah, but absolutely. to do that one, to do that through helping individuals to be better within themselves. Um, yes. Debbie, before we jump forward a little bit, I did want to just um, flag the um, concept that you mentioned about your parents both had some intergenerational trauma yes, yes. and that's a thing like some of our listeners will be very familiar with that um that sometimes we feel stuff and we experience stuff that isn't necessarily a response to our here and now that we actually take on um yes you know stuff from our lineage as well and sometimes it can go back many many lineages and this isn't even just you know past life stuff this is about um you know our our lineage can our our parents and their parents it can be passed down and it's no blame or anything but sometimes it yeah. just can help to understand some of those things that we can't understand um if that, yeah, I just wanted to flag that because I'm sure some of the listeners will be going, oh, what is that? What is that? And, share more and I think that. most of us, if if we were all honest, yeah. you know, and I'm not suggesting that, you know, some of us were fortunate, maybe, you know, to have parents that were both um, healthy, uh, yeah. emotionally, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is, is a gift yeah. for sure. Yeah. But I think generally speaking, and I may be off, but I don't think I am. I think most of us have experienced uh, whether it started through uh, our childhood yeah. being born into, um, you know, passed down generational, yeah. you know, trauma. And it's funny, you know, um, that really made me understand more as I got older, yes. um, just exactly why it happens. Like, yeah. why was, you know, when I started, when I became an adult and, and, and you know, I, I guess really, especially this last you know, 10 years of my life, yeah. right? I'm 61 now, but at 50 is a really pivotal moment for all of us. I think at yeah. 50 for me, I uh, think, you know, some things that happened, I lost uh, two people I loved uh, and it really made me uh, aware of, okay, so you know what, how about let's sit down and really look at where I came from. How was I feeling about it? Had I dealt with all that yeah came with it. And although I did break the cycle with my son, I have a son that's 26 now, and I became a single mother at age 37. Wow. Oh, yeah. And he was only two. So I, 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 and the reason why I became a single mother was because I was determined to give my son, um, the life that I unfortunately didn't have the opportunity 
to have at least one parent that was there as a steady, grounded force of love and and support. Yeah. You know, and and staying in the marriage, or I wasn't married, but we were would whatever, staying in the relationship with his father would not have allowed him to become the man that he is today, you know? Wow. Um, so for that, I, I must tell you, no matter what happens, what I accomplish or don't accomplish in life, having, raising my son has been the biggest accomplishment I've ever done. And it's interesting, isn't it? When, as you say that, I reflect on my life and um, many of the listeners will will know, my mum passed away the day before my 12th birthday And that put me into, that was trauma in my life and the trajectory of my life from that. Um, My parents, and we didn't talk about it. So mum mum was 36 when she passed away and we had no counselling. So this was in the 70s. We had no counselling as I had two older brothers. We just got on with life. So I became this really capable, strong woman on the external but on the internal it was just like holy shit like I don't even know how to do life Um, but I was doing life so there was this kind of duality of strength but I feel like my life's about to crumble so it took me probably you know 10 years in that state before I went you know what this is not how I want to live Um, and I made some very significant changes in life And when I had my kids, I was very, very intentional about how to raise the kids, even though there was days that I just thought, oh, I've got no idea. I've got no idea. (laughs) I do all the. How great a mom we are. We all have those days. Yes. And it's just like, oh, God, have I done that bloody dumbass thing again? But I was very intentional that we would talk about things. We would. Yes. Um, because the stuff that was lacking for me, I was kind of like, well, I don't want that for lacking for my kids. And there'll be stuff that I've done that they'll go, oh, Jesus, we're not going to um, do that with our kids because, you know, it's an evolution. It's an evolution. Yeah, and, yeah, for sure. Yeah. But, but, yeah. but, you know, you bring up a, a, a really uh, a very good, interesting, uh, valuable point here yeah. about, you know, it, it's not about, It's not about making a wrong or right. It's about choosing, like you just said, choosing to raise our children in a in a more productive, uh, secure, stable way that that they're able to talk to us about anything, that they're able to come to us. Okay. Because back again, we were around the same age. We we were, I we the sex was not, I didn't even know what a menstrual cycle was Mm. until I got it. Oh yes, I was no, you you know, and and it scared I was I thought, yeah, oh my God, I'm bleeding to death. Like that's how far gone, like like thank God for some of the changes that have occurred. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, with education and, yeah. and, and understanding, uh, yeah. letting, letting children know what's going to happen with their bodies. At yeah, a certain yeah. age. Even back in school, even back in public school, I don't know if you remember, but well, in, the, in Canada here anyways, we never, they never talked about any of it. They, they started never- to, they started to, and it was like scary. It wasn't kind of like this is yeah. n- natural and stuff. It was just like, oh, that's, that's scary. Um, I had well, had it, it, yeah. and again, it was because of the way it was explained. Like yeah. everything was so, and this and this, and this, structured and non yeah. non emotional. Yes. And they right, let's be honest. Like yeah. back then, yeah. I mean, health education. I mean, they went to places <laughs> yeah. now that you know we would like we, we'd be laughing about it. But back then, it was just this is taboo and that is taboo yeah. and that. So we were very ignorant, uh, yeah. so to speak, in 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 so many ways which caused, you know, a, a, a double-edged sword there because yes. some of it, for me personally, was the naivety of it all, yeah. which I think helped me in some ways, you know. Yeah. And then on the opposite way, um, could it have helped us to be a little more prepared? Uh, for sure. Yeah. So it, it's, you know, I think each generation brings with it different uh, struggles and 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 also different insights on yeah. on you know how can we 
How can we do better? How can, you know, not, not do better. I think that's the wrong word. How can we help our children yeah. grow and learn in a different environment, perhaps than what we learned in? Yeah. And not to say that it was all bad by any means, but I think we've gone from one extreme, though, I think, to another extreme. Yes, it's very different. But do you know what I love what you were saying there? And this is something I'm very conscious about too, is it's not about doing things better, or not always about doing things better, but when I'm reflecting on my life and when I'm working with my clients and coaching, I always look at get them to say, what is it that's working well? What are the yes. things that are working well, that the, the, the positives, the bits that I can celebrate, What's not working as well as I would like? And is there anything that I need to change? So it's not about just change for the ch- sake of change. I'm all about transformation. I'm absolutely about transformation. But I'm not about transformation just for the sake of it. You right. know, if things are working. It's got to make sense. It's got to yeah. be for Because everybody's different. What what works for one isn't going to work exactly. for another, right? Exactly. Right. Yeah. And, and like you just said, you know, okay, where it's good that you do that. Because I think it helps focus on the positives. Yeah, yeah. First, before you know what I mean? Like, like we all have areas, you know, let's be honest, none of us are perfect. No. And there's, <laughs> you know, as much as some days we'd yeah, like to what? think we are. Um, <laughs> oh, no, really? Um, <laughs> but you know what I mean? And having a sense of humor, again, like that's what I love about you as well. I mean, there are reasons why we've connected, yes, right? Yes, you yes. you got to be able to laugh at yourself. You, you got to be able to take the good and the bad with grain of salt. Um, and not take life too seriously. No, I know. Oh my gosh. Right? Oh my and gosh. That's I've what just, I love about, I'm working on that. I, I, you go. No, no, no. I'm listening, girl. Uh, I was going to say, I'm, do you know what? I'm generally pretty lighthearted, but there are times when I do get very serious and a bit too <laughs> over responsible for stuff. And I have to have a bit of a pet talk with myself it, to just chill out, like just mm-hmm. chill out. <laughs> um, Yes, but it's all uh, about balance. It it's balance. I, once yes. again, and you see what you just shared with me. Yeah. I'm the total opposite. Yeah. I'm the type that I jump in I, 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 without doing some, you know, research that I should be doing. Um, I'm an all or nothing, and, and and I think what happens for me it works only because it's part of who I am. Yeah. It's yeah. part like I like I I don't I'm not analytical. I'm not very techy. <laughs> As you could tell when I sent you stuff, like, <laughs> it worked out <laughs> perfectly. Like the it worked out perfectly. The dolphin. <laughs> so you know, we I, I think too we learn in life to embrace uh, what we all should, anyways. That's what I'm learning more and more as we get older. Is to embrace your strengths and that and what really fuels your soul, and and the stuff that you don't like doing. Right. The stuff that you don't like doing or that, you know, there, there's push and pull there instead of trying to make yourself like it or learn it. I've learned as I've gotten older, you know what? It's OK. Yeah. Focus on what you want to do, like what you what you what, what brings you happiness and fuels your soul and lights you up and hire out someone part time to do the techie stuff. And that like for me, anyways, that, like I think. And it's almost like a light bulb just goes off one day for like it did for me that why am I, why am I being so hard on myself? Because I feel that I should be good at all that yeah. I want. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. so true. Yeah. It's so, yeah. so true. And I don't know if part of that is being a woman. I don't know if part of that perhaps is, mm. it, 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 it is socially inbreded in mm. us from a young age, uh, especially in our generation where you know, we weren't taught to want more. We weren't taught that we could do anything. You know what I mean? Like I remember in high school, uh, you know, I took woodworking. I was such a rebel even back then. In grade nine, I took woodworking because I didn't want to be a dressmaker. I didn't want to do home economics. I took typing. I think I was the only person in the a w- woman in the class that failed typing class. Like, oh, yeah. like I didn't <laughs> want to be a secretary. Like, you know, so I, you know, we could go on and on and talk about, you know, so many positive changes yeah. that have happened for women, which I'm grateful and I'm yes. sure you are too. Yes. But yes. um, you know, getting back to to life and living, like you said, I think all of us um are entitled 
and I say that with, with warmth and sincerity, we're all entitled to be living our best life. Yeah. And you know, and it, you know, and, and I think that it's again, getting rid of that back voice in your head or, or society saying that, no, no, this is, this is where you, you should be fitting in, or this is where you, you should be feeling yeah. something. And I'm learning as I'm getting older and that's why I'm thinking, well, I better get her done before, you know, life is short, right? You know, you get to the point in mm-hmm. life where you realize that, you know, I've lived two thirds of my life so far, probably, you know, um, yeah. Yeah. and what else more do I want to do? And I think for your listeners that are listening, I say this, that don't have regrets. We're oh, going to make love mistakes. It. Love it. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Don't have regrets. Yeah. Um, I've made my chair of this state. And when you read my book, my friend, you will find mm-hmm. out. Uh, but I have no regrets now mm-hmm. because it. everything that I have gone through, every decision that I've made right, wrong, or indifferent has led me to who I am today. Yes. And that's what I think, right? We all, yes. I want that for everyone. I want mm-hmm. everyone to feel that they are worthy and that they can live. Uh, 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 you know, their best line. And yeah, that's where I, we're so, we're so connected uh, on what we both do in that manner. Oh, absolutely. And it's about, um, and that comes for me too, living our best life doesn't mean that everything is perfect and rosy and glitters and sparkles all the time. No. But it's about um, what I have experienced is when I really know myself and what is it that I am good at, what is it that I value? What do I want in life? Then, and what brings me joy and fulfillment? Really, the, the my blueprint is knowing what I want, knowing who I am, and then being able to do more of those things that bring me fulfillment. Absolutely. <laughs> it's not an over. Sorry, I'm giving away, you know, coaching clients, but it's kind of like. <laughs> No, it's not. No, like but it's science. always good to share. You know what? And and, and like also, science. and you, I'm sure you're you're in agreement. I think we're all at a point too, and what we're both doing, yeah, yeah, is helping. Uh, well, for me, it's it's women only. Um, yeah. on my podcast that will, you yeah, know yeah. that yeah. I'm starting soon is is women from all different backgrounds, yeah. all different ages, yeah. all from all over the world sharing what they've learned not just in business as an as an entrepreneur or uh whatever career or or work field they may be in but also um personal lessons learned like i'm not suggesting that you know we all share and there's a kumbaya and we all get it right away and we all know that yeah that'll work for me too but what i can say is this i wish that when i was a younger woman you know, yeah. as you know, we were in the same age group. Yeah. There was none of this accessibility yeah. that there is yeah. now uh, on social media platforms. Now, I will admit, um, I I think there's good and bad in social media. Um, I see the good in it, and we yes. we focus yes. on the good on it. But I I certainly don't go down that rabbit hole no. where um, any negativity uh, pops its ugly head up or any. Um, controversial like you know it, it's a safe space but it's also a, a predatorial space for uh, some people that can get very very nasty me and 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 those I, I just totally deflect and yeah because we got enough do you know what I noticed yeah. I mean in the world yeah yeah <laughs> and that? do you know what I noticed with social media as well it is great I mean we we connect it it's beautiful yes. like there's an yes. there's a yes. platform but I think it also brings in a lot of comparisonitis, self-doubt, yes. Um, yes. you know, seeing somebody doing something and then going, and I've fallen into this as well, going, oh, my God, oh. like, you know, they've got X, Y, and Z, and mm-hmm. I, I can't do that. What's taking like, me so long? What's, yeah, taking, what's yeah. wrong with me? What's, what's it? And, again, you're right. We all do it. It's yeah, human yeah. nature to compare. Yeah, yeah. But um, I get and- out of my lane. I, I, kind of, I stay in my lane. I kind of yeah. go, yep. I'm recognizing that, but that's part of the self-awareness. I know my patterns. I know my patterns and I choose, again, it's a very conscious decision, what I choose to listen to, 
to watch, to connect with. I'm very, very discerning, Debbie, that I probably wasn't as much in younger ear, younger ages, but now I choose the people in my life because I want to hang out with them. My podcast yeah. is about women who inspire me about just how they do life. So same as you, there will be pearls of wisdom that will drop. I know there are pearls of wisdom that will drop, but it's not here about telling people you should do it, what Debbie and I are saying. No, you should do this to share our exactly. experiences. And I wish, I just wish that I had had something as well, that I could exactly. have seen somebody that was navigating not even exactly what I was doing, but what are some strategies? It wasn't until I was exposed to, you know, some of my studies through psychology and um, starting to learn to do um, coaching. I was just like, oh, my God, there are some resources here that are really, really helpful. Why the fuck didn't anybody tell me that when I was <laughs> you know, But I wasn't exactly. ready. What? I, I wasn't ready. That, that was part of my life journey. I accept that. And one of the things... I do, Debbie, is I honour my past. And I never used to, I always used to say, oh, that shit that happened in the past. Right, it's not yeah. not shit. It is it, no. it's my life it's experience. You, yes. And, and I it helps that. develop who you are, yes. good, bad, or indifferent. Exactly. Like I was, I'll be honest yeah. with you, I, I was ashamed of my childhood. Yeah. And even my closest friends, I, I, ne I, I never talked yeah. about my childhood. They did, yeah. they knew very they little about, know. Yeah. um, you know, and then because I was such, I was ashamed that I, I came from such dysfunction and, um, and there was, you know, abuse and, and, uh, you know, it, it, it I really had to be, and that's how the book, we might as well roll into the book. That's how the book came about was finally at the age of 50. I had dealt with a lot of things already from my past. I had bro broken the cycle for my son uh, of, of, you know, passing down um, generational trauma, so yeah. to speak. And, I, and I'm not suggesting, I agree with you that I think that it's in your, it's in your genes. Um, it is passed down, some not it, just yeah. from what you yeah, hear. It, it yeah. Absolutely. It is. Yeah. It, it is. So that's, yeah, I think that's where it, really my life as far as grasping and accepting and and letting go of that shame and embracing and not being you know ashamed of where I came from because I realized that that you know you know no matter what we do no matter what mistakes we make no matter what we're born into um that doesn't define you that does not dictate or should not dictate yeah who you become. Yes, yeah. And that really was the inspiration and my, my, the, the, because believe me, I never wanted to be a writer. You know, I didn't, I started journaling at 50 yeah. and then off and on over 10 years because life happens <laughs> when, when you read the book, you're here. Yeah. We had a, we had a house fire. Um, well, it's, I guess it's been about 11 years ago and um, we lost just about everything. Oh, and no, no, but you know what? Yeah. Here's the deal. A silver lining came out of this because had Austin, my son, he was alone in the house and me and my ex-husband were out on a date Yeah. and he was only 15 at the time. And um, we just left. We'd only been gone like a half an hour, 45 minutes. And I got the call uh, from my son and he was upset. That. I could hear fire engines in the background and I said he said mom the house is on fire <laughs> I mean you, you think you're you know you just kind of think oh I'm not hearing this right yeah. and I said part so uh bottom line is this um through it all and believe me we're born with nothing and we leave with nothing and as much as I lost some material things that meant something to me because they were left um my sister had given me some things yeah. before she passed uh, that was hard. Uh, and it wasn't, it had nothing to do with the material things themselves, but what they meant to me. Right. But anyways, losing everything, um, other than my Christmas decorations, which I was so, I was just so over the moon about that, uh, taught me that after three days after they had done, um, like they had the fire chief here and they didn't, you know, they, they found the cause it was electrical and they attached garage. He told me the fire chief said, um, I'm not sure if you, you're aware but had your son not come upstairs because we're, we're in a raised ranch and gotten, was hungry for a bite to eat. 
and did not hear sizzling through the through the wall like there's a, yeah. a like a wall in the garage door from the garage and entrance into the house the house my car was parked in the garage and five minutes later the house would have blew up with him in it gosh so lesson there as difficult and stressful and displaced we were and all we had were the clothes on our backs and because you know the smoke damage uh toxic toxic like mm. it, it yeah anyways you'll read about it in the in the book but that was a very valuable lesson for me because I understood very clearly as much as you know we all go through life and say, ah, oh, you know, I'm not a material, you know, I'm not materialistic. And 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 I'm gonna be honest, I like nice things. Yeah. I mean, I've worked hard all my life. Um, I like driving nice vehicles, I like having a nice home, I like, you know, um, I'm not ashamed of that. However, it was a very humbling moment for me to understand that at the end of the day how close I was to losing my one and only child yeah, gosh. and that everything yeah. else really didn't matter. Yeah. We were out yeah. of our house for six months. They had to, they had, they tore my, our house down to a shell that down to the studs, they had to rip out the walls, the floor. I mean, everything. Wow. And as again, as I look, I mean, you, you can tell, I can, I can hear it in my voice, yeah, I can the, um, just I can the hear stress it. of it all. But, um, Gratitude, gratitude, gratitude that I didn't lose my one and my one only mm-hmm. child. You know, mm-hmm. really, that this all stuff, the stuff that our material stuff means nothing to us. Mm-hmm. It really doesn't. It's our relationships with the people that we love, and that was a really pivotal moment. I think every anything that we go through, but especially when we go through something like that, like something that's very uh, traumatizing, um, it's our choice what how we look at it. You can you can either look at it as Oh my God, poor me. And oh, look what we had to go through. And I lost all this. And I lost my favorite coat and a lot. Like, you know what? At the end of the day, we're all born with nothing and you leave with nothing. So you better make sure in between that you love the people, like you said, that you love. You tell them you love them. You show them you love them because that's what living is all about is our relationships, right? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And, um, we went through a not a um not a loss like that but a very a financial loss and there there was a, a number of years where it was very very stressful and i'd always said my family is the most important thing but when we were faced with losing you know likely to lose things it was just like actually my family really is the the most important thing and it's um yeah sometimes we need that little bit of a shake up well but. it just it's a you know i'm not suggesting or or or, 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 I, or I think that everybody should go through no i know i'm saying no but no by right. any means but but what you just said is very true though is yeah. that in whatever relation that that we we go through that sense of uh whether it's financial loss uh material loss uh yeah. loss of control which yes. i've really had to learn the last five years <laughs> um it's it's it, it it's again it's just grasping you know not what it's taken but yeah. what has it given yeah yeah i love right? that and it's also a process isn't it this, this isn't just like oh no burnt down i'm fine no. there would have been yeah. no absolutely no. a process this is now i can that. talk about Yes. Yeah. yeah. I can what, talk about this now. Eleven yes. years, you know, it's been yes. eleven years. Now. Yeah. But what is it given? I think that's um what is the silver lining? Um, I'm gonna fast forward and change track a little bit. You mentioned at the beginning of our chat that you're really excited about your next phase of life. What's exciting you? What's that about? What's the excitement? Well, I think, you know, it, I like challenges and <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I definitely um, am not one to shy away from a challenge. And I think I'm learning that about myself that it's not so much the challenge. I think it's the fact that I, I, I like to push myself in, in, out of my comfort zone. I, I, because, you know, that's how I've grown and that's mm. how I, been able to accomplish some of the things that I have wow. in my life already is is to let go of that fear of well what if I fail what if nobody yeah. likes me what about you know this or that yeah. or whatever 
you could talk yourself out of doing just about anything in life, okay? But my attitude is as long as I'm breathing, as long as I can physically and mentally live my life, I'm going to do it with everything I got. And I'm at a phase now where I feel that I'm ready to teach others um, things that I wish, you know, I had some insight myself when I was a younger woman growing up, you know, and again, I certainly don't pretend to know everything because I God, I don't, and I there's still so much more to learn. But you know, I think it's it. You know, I I really find it interesting. The concept for me now is to, you know I've done I've had this successful thirty plus year as a Remax agent. Uh, I you know um, it it really doesn't matter. But you know I I I, I won awards and and, and mm-hmm. Hall of Famer and all that, and and I'm very proud of myself that I accomplished that. But where it where it, where it all that has led me, I believe, is to a point now in my life where I'm more confident and I have no fear of now putting it out there off, off, authentically. Yeah. Uh, it, because I think in our world right now, we are lacking, we, we are craving authenticity. Yes. And um, what you see is what you get with me. Yeah, and I've always yeah, been this way. Yeah. And I think that that, you know, I, I just feel that there's more for, of me to give now in in different ways. You know, I, it's funny that now I become we become the teachers right as we get older. Yeah, it's interesting. And, 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 and I can't wait uh, for for the interesting more conversations that I'm going to have with women. I can't wait to learn more myself mm. along the journey. I can't wait to laugh more, to feel more, to, to make, you know, to have tears shed, happy and sad. Like, I, like to me, living life is just living it all, but doing it together and just embracing whatever comes our way and looking at it as, okay, okay. So maybe this didn't go quite the way I thought it would, <laughs> but what, what, what has it, what has it now inspired me to do? Yes. Like, I, I really think that life takes you on different curves and different, um, you know, oopsie doopsies, you know, you didn't, you didn't see that one coming, did you? Um, it, 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 it does. And there, there are reasons for it. And yes. I think that reason it is that our responsibility to listen to our inner self to acknowledge what's happening and the changes that are occurring within ourselves and to have the courage to go forward and say, okay, I'm now ready. Let's do it. Uh, I, I hear a real freedom when you're sharing that. And my, um, I was going to say my wish for other people listening, women listening is that they also feel that sense of freedom in their own lives, wherever they're at. And I was about to say, you know, if we can help fast track, but I don't think it is about helping people fast track because they have their own lessons. They have their own life. They have their own curriculum. It might just be my, um, I guess in, in doing what I do and especially with the podcast is just hearing Mm -hmm. just, different women about how they do life and there might be some just little pearls that will drop out of that that might help individuals where they're at in their life it's not about saying here do it our way like I really am very I get I kind of I don't get angry with a lot of things but I do get very frustrated Mm. when people say do this do that there's a template there's a fucking you know, a formula yeah. that you've got yeah. to follow yeah. and blah, blah, yeah. blah. It's like the formula is your formula. That's correct. That's the it's, only but, formula. That's right. It, it, and all we do, sharing these authentic, having these authentic yeah. conversations with one another, okay, is 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 really a gift, Yes. you know, to ourselves and to one another, yeah. right? I mean, and you're right, not, not, not what works for you works for me, what, what, but it's kind of like sharing, oh, I didn't look at it. I never thought about it that yeah, exactly. way. Oh, that's yeah. an interesting person. That's an interesting yeah. way to look at it. Like, I think it's having the ability yeah. and bringing women together and empowering them to understand and, and recognize that we are capable, more than capable yes. yeah, yeah. of, of living 
our true life yeah. with all that we have, all that we yeah. are, and all that we will become. Because I think that we are constantly in transition. I yes. think that we are constantly as human beings in that change of, you know, nothing ever stays the same. Your relationships don't stay the same. Your you, you don't stay the same. You know, you, you you as the more experiences and more things that you go through in life, that it's going to change it. And how it changes you is really up to us. I think you, you froze there, Catherine. Oh, it's okay. Hey, stuff happens. Oh my gosh! Sorry, we were just um, just coming to the close of the podcast and technical difficulties. Yeah. There was a bit of a gremlins in the system. So anyway, um, Debbie, yes. tell me, tell me about your book. You, you're mentioning your book. What's your book called? Uh, my book's called No Thanks, I'm Full. <laughs> and <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, I. I just thought that, yeah, you, sometimes in life you get to a point and you say, no, thanks, I'm full. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, you can, it's, and again, it's my memoir. It's, a, it's a, I'm a woman that gets to the point pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, I've had people read the book and they they thoroughly enjoyed it, but they said, I, mean, I wish I had it gone into a little bit more detail, but I'm the, I also believe that, you, you know, sometimes there's things that you need to leave to people. Yeah, that's right. You get, okay, get to the no, point. No. Yeah. Love exactly. It. So, uh, yeah, no thanks on fall, a memoir. It's just really about having, you know, learning how to overcome adversities, how it, it can give you, it, it can give you strength. You never knew you had, yeah. um, also finding unconditional love in many different ways. I write a chapter about my dog, uh, how, how special and how much love she gave yeah. us. She passed away a year ago and I'm so glad I wrote the chapter before she passed. So I think, yeah, so that, yeah, it's on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, you know, pretty much. And we'll have so. all the details in the show notes. Yeah, well. yeah, it's all um, good. So, yeah. Oh, my gosh. And Debbie. now, yeah. yep, sorry. Now you go. You yeah, go. and then, yeah, so that, then the podcast, The Real Deal with Depth, is yeah. going to be starting at the end of March, and it'll be on the different platforms as well. And uh, I can't wait. I can't wait to have you on it as a guest, my friend. And all I can say is, I know you're going to wrap things up here. This has been a real pleasure. I feel that we could just talk on and on and on oh, for no, sure. No, yes. And, you know, it, but you know, that, that it, that's, it, that's a good thing. You know, when you can have conversations with people and just soak it all up yeah. and share and laugh, that's what it's about. That's what living's all about. So thank you again for having me on. It's been my pleasure to be here, and I look forward to interviewing you on my podcast. I'll be in the flip seat, yeah. And I'm so grateful, um, Deb. This was just a beautiful, and I knew it would be. I knew just from having connected with you on socials and then getting to know you now, there is so much more that we didn't talk about, but people can read the book, and I'm sure when they start following you, they'll start to um, you know, learn more about your journey. So. Hugs and big happiness to you. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you again, Catherine.